What's up guys, welcome back. We are continuing with our macro tracker and integrating OpenAI in order to get our macronutrients. This is the third video in the series. Make sure you watch the previous one so you know what the heck we're doing, especially with OpenAI, because right now we just, uh, we got a response from OpenAI. We did all this stuff in the previous episode. We created our URL request and we sent off a response or we sent a request to OpenAI. We called that request here, a slice of cheese pizza, and we got this response which is pretty dope means it's working now we need to decode this and in order to do so i want to do a few things before i'm gonna cut all these models out and i'm just gonna put them in one file to be honest you would probably put them in a separate file each of them we will call this request models and this is not a standard pattern or anything this naming I'm just calling it this because these are for the requests and I'll do the same for the response. But yeah, we, I'd probably create a folder for like request and response and then make a file for each of them. But let's actually see what we need to decode our response. So we're going to need a model. We know that, right? And I'm going to call the GPT response. And this will be decodable since we're going to decode it. And to be honest, what you really, all you want, well, because you could, you could grab all this stuff, all this information if you needed it, but we don't, we don't really need it to be honest. All we need is choices or all we want is choices. So we're going to define that and choices is, is an array. An array of what? We will see in a second and give me, let's see. And one thing I want to note before we do this is you could put this in chat GPT and see what it tells you. Like you could say decode or turn these into Swift models to decode this JSON or tell it to decode this JSON using Swift, something like that. And it would probably create these models for you and it would include all of it. But again, we're only going for choices cause that's all we're looking for. And in the choice, in the choices, uh, value or key in the key for this. Yeah. The key value for choices. We get an array of objects and that object, where does it end? So that's for this is for message and ends right here. And it's basically an, uh, an object. And I called the object, uh, GPT completion because that's what it pretty much is. It's a completion from chat GPT a chat completion and we can put that in here. All right. And in this object, we have an index, we have a message and we have a finish reason. Let's grab the message and let's grab the finish. Actually, we're not going to grab the finish reason because then you have to bring in your coding keys because this is camel case and we don't really need this for our use case. If you're going to use this for your use case, then bring it in. You will bring it in camel case without the lower, uh, the underscore. And then you can just use coding keys, something like this. And you could do case finish reason equals finish reason like this as a string. Let me show you guys how you would do that actually. So finish reason. You would copy this string and set it equal here. And then this would be no. And then you would have that. You would have finished reason right here as a string, but we're not doing it this way. So you don't have to worry about that. You can message me or comment down below if you have any questions about that. Hmm. So the message is a role. We have a role assistant content, no function call. So here we got a function call, but this is within the message. So we actually have to create a message first before we um, I skipped ahead. Um, response message. And in this message, what do we have? We have a role content and function call. 
Ah, so we do have a function call. This would be of type, let's see, this is an object. So we're gonna have to create a model for it and we can fix this error by calling this here. And we forgot to conform to a decodable, paste that in there. Now we need this, which is an object. So we'll have to create that model GPT function call. Make sure you mark it decodable. Command B. All right. And in here we have a name and arguments. So name type string and arguments. And if you guys see arguments is actually a string. So we can cast it as a string. Hit command B. And now we can try to use our decoder. So let's see. Let's see, we're gonna say, well, for you have to try JSON decoder. And one thing before we go is we need to handle this difference in camel case and because right here is snake case. So there's two ways to do this in, when you're decoding JSON. You can do enum and something cool with, um, Xcode 15 is you could just write coding keys and it's going to autofill it for you. And for this case, you would call this one. And this needs to conform to string as well. And we have to flip them. There we go. So this is the one way of handling that. The other way is if you create a decoder reference, so you create the object and then you say decoder key decoding strategy you can say convert from snake case and that'll handle that for you but doing it the way we're doing you don't have to add that in the response you just have to add that in your model then we can decode and uh, we need to decode gpt response you need to see the self from the data and this should give us GPT response. Or actually, let's call it a result. That's what it'll give us. And let's print result dot choices. Actually, let's just print the whole result and we can print result.choices and we only care about this zero index dot message function call let's print that let's see what we get and i believe with every response from chat gpt you only care about the zero because that's going to be the recent one unless you're doing something different. So let's run this and see if we are actually decoding our data. I should have commented this out. Oh, we already ran it. All right, I'm going to comment. I'm going to, I'm going to delete this and run this one more time just to uh, clean up this uh, terminal. All right. So this was working cool. But I, something to note here is this is a string with a JSON resp uh, response inside of it. And we can try to decode this actually. So let's see. Macro, let's call this macro response. Make this decodable. And in here, we need a food, which is of type string. And we have fats, which is a int. We have protein, which is an int. And we have carbs, which is an int. Hit command B. 
paste that under string and let's see what happens. Let's see if Xcode allows us to do it like this. Yep, we get an issue figured. That's why we had to run it as a string. Yeah. So this doesn't work when we use macro response because this is actually a string that we are getting here. And you actually could, um, you could go in and do some things with coding keys and decoder, but it would get very complicated. And one way around that is we can say, let's args. So to get the arguments, we need to use this and dot arguments. And we can call, we can use the JSON decoder again. We say try JSON decoder decode. Let's see. We'll say macro response dot self and let's pass in args. That's going to give us an issue, but we can say data from, nope. Oh, wait, give me a second. Uh -huh. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to guard let Arg data equals, I believe you can do args dot data using UTF eight. Else we can throw and we're just going to use like a URL error, I believe. Yeah. You can just use a bad URL. We're not doing real error handling, but you would create an error for your API class, like a custom error and put that in there. Maybe we'll do that later down in the series. I just want to get through this. And we pass our arg data in here. And then this would be, let's call this a macro. And let's print macro. See what happens. All right, run this bad boy. And let's see what happens. Hey, there we go. 12 fats, 12 proteins, 12 carbs. That's dope. So this is working. Let's refactor this stuff out to its own file. We're going to call this response models. And this is not even a response model to be honest, but I'm going to keep it in here for a second. All right. We're going to stop here for now. In the next video, we're going to be using the macro response that we have here. We're probably going to change this quite a bit and we are going to add some UI. So when we press this, the user gets shown the prompt to add in the food item and we'll send that request to ChatGPT, and we'll get something like this in response. So. I'll see you guys there. I hope you've been enjoying the series. Let me know down below, like, comment, share, subscribe, and keep coding, keep tracking your macros, I guess. And I'll see y'all later. Peace. <laughs>